Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the October 16th meeting of the City of Vista Planning Commission. Uh, at this time, would you please rise and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance, uh, led by Commissioner Jackal. Mr. Salazar, the roll call, please. Commissioners are all present, sir. Very good. Uh, I'd like to extend a welcome to uh, Commissioner Grimm, uh, just re uh, appointed by the mayor and the council to replace Commissioner Carroll. And we want to welcome you to the commission and, uh, and look forward to uh, your input on, uh, on a whole bunch of projects. So. All right. Commissioners, uh, before you are, the, the next item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes from our September 18th meeting. Uh, are there any changes to the uh, minutes? If not, can I hear a motion to approve? Commissioner Jackal. Since you were absent, can oh, you do, can't that? do that? I don't think you can do that. <laughs> Commissioner Kramer. If there are no changes to the minutes, I move that the minutes be accepted as written. Commissioner Garrison. I second that motion. All right, very good. It's been moved and seconded to approve the minutes of the September 18th meeting. Please cast your vote. And the minutes pass uh, on a five to two vote with Commissioner Jackal and Commissioner Grimm abstaining because they weren't here for the meeting. So we'll move on. Um, Mr. Connolly, any changes to our agenda tonight? No changes to the agenda, Chairman. Okay, thank you. Uh, the next item on our agenda is oral communications. This is a time that the commission sets aside for members of the public to address us on items that are not on the agenda. And I do have one speaker slip, uh, Logan Anderson. And if anyone else would like to address the commission on an item that's not, not on the agenda, you need to fill out a speaker slip and turn it into Mr. Salazar. Mr. Anderson. Last year, uh, oh, sorry, well, that sounds a lot different. <laughs> uh, okay, I'll get used to this. Hold on a second. Um, uh, anyway, so the boards that are out there uh, are are the result of a, a weekend charrette, but it's really uh, the culmination of a year-long effort last year that was set up by the president of AI San Diego, Phil Bona. He was meant to be here tonight. He couldn't be here, um, but. Throughout the year, once a month, we met with specific ideas that were to address this uh, notion of uh, SANDAG put out a report that says uh, San Diego County can expect one million more people by 2050. And presently, you're all probably pretty aware there's not a lot of places for one million people more uh, to live, especially workforce housing. That seems to be the, the, the crucial element to this. So. Throughout last year, we had different uh, programs set up to address different uh, items that pertain to housing, uh, whether it's a, uh, increasing density or if it's uh, utilizing uh, passive means for conditioning or uh, solar energy or mass transit oriented design, things like that. There, there was a focus every month. And then for two days in November, the third and the fourth, uh, we had, there were nine districts of San Diego and then there's a North County which absorbed East County too, and then a South County team that put together uh, uh, boards that, uh, of architect and uh, anyone who wanted to be a part of this, uh, uh, solutions that uh, we could look at or explore. So those were all drafted up really quickly and then uh, thrown on the boards and then we kind of cleaned them up a little bit and we're trying to get them through 
all the different municipalities for an opportunity for people to come in and see them. So I would just encourage all of you as well as all of you. And by the way, I wanted to say it's pretty cool to see so many young people here. I'm used to a lot of Encinitas Planning Commission hearings. There's not so many young people. Uh, so it's pretty cool uh, to see that. But I'd encourage everyone to just kind of go out there and look. And yes, there, it's, it's heavily focused on the districts of San Diego. But uh, And there wasn't much done. I led the team for North County, but I was the only architect on the on the team or whatever, and uh, we kind of focused on ADUs or whatever, which I'm sure you're well familiar with. But uh, there, there's, there's opportunity here, and we should all be kind of considerate of it, uh, especially for you young people. Uh, I can't even afford a house. You guys are in more trouble than I am. So <laughs> take some time to go out there and just look at those boards. And uh, if you have any questions, you know, uh, AIA is a good resource. We're, we're here for the people we want to, uh, our design skills and uh, just our knowledge of of planning and, and all that. And we want to work with you fellows, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, to, you know, progress this and, and, and provide housing for all. So thank you and uh, have a good meeting tonight. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Anderson. All right. Um, the two items on our agenda tonight our, our uh, early design review. And this is a process that the uh, city has initiated where developers or applicants can come in, submit their plans. Uh oh. All right. Uh, we have another speaker for uh, oral communications. Matt uh, Lickenboat? Yes, yeah, sorry for interrupting. I should have turned my card in a little bit sooner. Um, I got a zoning notice um, at my home uh, recently. And it was actually, I appreciated it, just to you know, let me know what's going on. It was a well-detailed map, a good description. Uh, so it kind of got me up to speed. But at the same time, I kind of felt a little bit behind because I wasn't even like, aware it was on the agenda. Uh, so I checked um, the website to see if it was you know, going to be a part of this meeting, uh, but it wasn't. It kind of felt like um, a decision had been made, and it wasn't clear to me how I was going to be aware of that, that it was on the agenda. Uh, also, from the website, you don't really clearly state what tonight's uh, meeting is going to be about. You have to go download a PDF viewer. Um, so I do appreciate the zoning notice. Uh, that was terrific. But just maybe the initial, this is happening, I think needs to be communicated a little bit more to the community, just generally speaking. Thank you. Okay. If you'll, after the meeting, if you'll touch base with staff, there is a master list that they can put you on that gives uh, kind of early notification of what's coming up on the agenda. So I, I think that would be helpful for you. Okay, as I was saying, um, the two items on our agenda tonight are early design review. Uh, they are not public hearings, but we will take public testimony. We will not make a decision tonight, but we will give our input to the two applicants on uh, about five design aspects of their project. So uh, having said that, the first item is um, Paseo Artist Village, and Ms. Chow will give her staff report. The applicant will come and, and add to that presentation. Uh, the commissioners will ask questions about the project. We'll open it up then for public comment, uh, and I, I have public I have speaker slips uh, for that. And then we will, the commissioners will give the applicant their input on a variety of, uh, of design aspects. And that, that will conclude. They'll take those back, do what they want to to their project, and then come in with an official submittal and application. And there'll be a formal public hearing on down the road. So, Ms. Chow, uh, Paseo Artist Village. Good evening, Chairman Rossler, Planning Commissioners. I'm Patsy Cho, I'm the City Planner and Deputy Director of Community Development Department. I'm pleased to be here this evening to present the first early design review meeting, which is called Paseo Artist Village. So just to give you a little background on the early design review process, as Chairman Rossler was indicating, the purpose of the EDR is really to provide the opportunity for the Planning Commission to reveal this initial proposal and then provide some preliminary comments to the applicant who's present here tonight, and they will have a formal presentation after mine. The proposal, as a reminder, has not been routed, has not been fully reviewed by all the city staff, 
and it's been reviewed basic, um, in terms of basic zoning compliance. The applicants here tonight, they'll be able to answer specific questions that you have about the project design and also the thought process that was behind the initial proposal. And last but not least, there is no formal vote or action that's being taken tonight that is necessary for this EDR item. So in terms of the project scope, it's a preliminary proposal to develop a mixed-use affordable housing community with 60 apartment units on approximately 0.82 acre site, which is comprised of eight separate parcels at the time, at this time. The subject site is located west of South Santa Fe Avenue and south of Guahomi Street. It has been, or was previously occupied by several commercial buildings which have been demolished. And the only one that's uh, left standing is the Century Link, uh, which is a fiber optic switching station that remains on site. There is a one five-story and a three-story building that's being proposed as part of the project, along with commercial retail space of about 2,500 square feet. There would be also associated improvements related to parking, landscaping, sidewalks, private balconies. So the project location as shown on this visual is the Paseo Artist Village, identified in this, the red boundary on the site. And, you and also you will notice the gap in between, which is the Century Link improvement, the building, and their um, open area that's next door to the building. And this is located in the uh, downtown Vista specific plan in the Paseo Santa Fe district. The subject site is surrounded by commercial uses across the street on South Santa Fe on the east side of that road. And uh, further to the north, you have Guide Lumber. And further to the east and further to the west, you have residential uses, single family homes, as well as multifamily complexes. In terms of the general plan designation, it's identified as a mixed use designation, which allows up to 40 dwelling units per acre. The zoning is downtown Vista specific plan, Paseo Santa Fe district. So basically surrounded by other mixed use uh, designated uh, land within the downtown Vista specific plan is the, the purple color that it's identified on this slide. A couple of photos of the project site looking northwest at the project site from South Santa Fe. So those buildings no longer there have been demolished and including the parking area um, that's part of the project. And the other picture at the bottom of the slide is looking southwest at the project site from South Santa Fe. And the uh, Century Link uh, building, which, be left which is left standing, which remains, but everything else has been demolished. So the proposed project would basically require a special use permit, a site development plan, and a tentative parcel map. Again, for 60 apartment units, a five-story and a three-story building, a maximum of five-story. There would be 22 one-bedroom, 22 two-bedrooms, and 16 three-bedroom units at a proposed density of 73 dwelling units per acre. Right now, in the general plan, 40 dwelling units per acre is allowed. So therefore, the special use permit comes in the picture in order to allow for uh, exceeding the permitted density in the downtown Vista specific plan and in the general plan. The residential parking requires a total of 121 parking spaces where they are currently showing 83 provided. Commercial parking, they're providing nine, where 11 are required. In terms of open space, when looking at the submitted plans that were submitted preliminary for this EDR, the required 12,000 square feet of open space is being met through the use of balconies, common landscape areas, and a courtyard along South Santa Fe. The height is 60 foot maximum is allowed. They're showing 60 foot. So the, if they were to exceed that, um, the special use permit would also be triggered uh, by that if it were to be needed. And in this particular uh, design, they're also requesting uh, for density bonus concessions. Uh, because it is 100% affordable housing project, uh, they are allowed to request for three concessions. And so the following that they're actually uh, proposing to include for concessions is related to parking, as they are currently not meeting it per code. The dwelling unit sizes, which is below what the development code calls for, however, it is meeting uh, the tax credit application or the tax credit requirements. And the common laundry facility is being proposed instead of having uh, individual washer and dryers in each of the units. 
Just a, a note related to the density bonus, um, the 35% maximum density bonus would give them a 54 dwelling units per acre, and that would equate to 45. I just wanted to mention some of these numbers just to keep that uh, in the back of your heads as we discuss further. In terms of the conceptual site plan, the, the bigger picture here identifies the improvements on South Santa Fe, the roundabout, the diagonal parking, and on the small end set, the, the building at the corner is the three-story building where the commercial retail space would be located. And then there's the separation in the middle where CenturyLink is located. And then the orange piece would be the uh, five-story building with the first level, which is the garage and partially subterranean garage uh, below, so two levels of parking. In terms of the architecture that's being proposed, it includes simple forms accentuated with durable materials, exposed concrete at the base, finished plaster and metal siding. There will also be use of painted metal railings and gates, uh, gabled roof forms, awnings at the retail frontage, and there will be a screen wall, basically that's along the existing commercial parcel, century link, that's not part of the project, but that would be provided in order to ensure a consistent look uh, with the rest of the project along South Santa Fe. So to provide continuity and um, unification of the two pieces. The architecture as shown on this slide, uh, a picture on the upper left is Guajome and South Santa Fe view looking straight at the project at the corner where there's retail space, the three-story building, and then at the distance is the five-story building. The uh, South Santa Fe view on the upper right is looking at uh, the bottom floor. You have the gallery space and then the open courtyard with the five-story building. And the bottom picture is a uh, view from Mercantile, which you have the five-story with the, looking at the garage structure, uh, driving into the garage structure and the partially subterranean, the bottom floor. So these are floor plans identifying the second, the third floor. I just put a, um, the inset here on the one bedroom, one bathroom configuration, which is the 550 square foot uh, unit, one bedroom. And then on this next slide, it's the two bedroom at 750 square feet, the three bedroom at 1,000, and kind of the uh, fourth and the fifth floor kind of mimicking what's on the uh, second and the third floor. So with this, the staff requests that the Planning Commission provide comments to the applicant tonight related to this proposed design of the project. And again, there's no formal vote or action taken on this item. Staff is available for any questions you may have, and the applicant does have a formal presentation, uh, which you can hear right next, or unless you have any questions for me at this time. Thank you. Any questions for staff? Commissioner Jackal? On. Are you, uh, as a, a department, not requiring landscape plans for early design review? We actually have that um, stated as part of you know the submittal for early design review. Sometimes we do get them, and sometimes we don't uh, because it's kind of the preliminary stages of their concept, um, and sometimes it becomes difficult to put all of that up front. Uh, so it kind of varies a little bit. Okay. Um, <clears throat> my second question is regarding the density bonus concessions. Are we required to approve them? The state law, as far as density bonus, when you are meeting the affordable housing requirements, which truly uh, or this is a 100% affordable housing project, it gives them the right to have the concessions. So there is not much in terms of... Um, declining that in terms of what they're asking for uh, in terms of development concessions. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Looney. Thank you. Uh, I've got four questions for you. Does the city have a, um, a lot coverage uh, for this particular zone piece of property? No, not, not here. Okay. Are there any particular setbacks for this zone? Yes, there are. And the front and the side are actually zero. And the rear is 15. And the front, there's a front step back above two stories of 10 feet. Okay. Um, are there any street improvements proposed for a Guahomi? Does um, that have to be widened? Not from a CIP that I'm aware of, but in terms of other projects that you've seen in the past, 
uh, related to another project on Lado de Loma. There are some improvements there related to Inland Rail Trail, but associated with the private development, though, okay. on Guahomi, yes. And then the last question, are there, what are the other concessions that come with a um, affordable housing project? You know, we've listed three in the presentation. Mm -hmm. What are the other concessions that the applicant has available to them? Beyond the three, they don't have any more. The oh. three is the maximum. So they choose to pick items that uh, they know that they're not able to meet, although they might be meeting tax credit requirements. Um, unfortunately, they don't meet our city standards. But the three that are listed is the maximum that they can ask for. Mm -hmm. There's a cap on it. OK, thank you. I don't have a speaker slip from the applicant, so if uh, they'd like to come and make their formal presentation, uh, now's the time. Yes. Yes, thank you. Good evening, Mr. Chair, uh, and commissioners and staff. I'm Mary Jane Jagodzinski. I'm Vice President of Development with Community Housing Works. Uh, we are a 30-year-old nonprofit um, uh, based in the San Diego area. Oops. We went, we kind of missed one. All right, I guess the clicker won't work, so we'll. Um, at any rate, my, uh, many of my team are actually here this, this evening. Um, if there are questions later, um, uh, Mike Levin from Excel Engineering is, is here. Uh, Diego Velasco, who's a principal with MW Steel, is here. And toward the latter part of my presentation, I will actually have him uh, make uh, that presentation. Um, and um, our, our general contractor, who's really also sitting at the table with us during design, is Sun Country Builders, and John Allsweed is at a, a, out of town at a family event. All right, next slide, please. Thank you. Um, just a quick note, this is a prior project that we've completed here in Vista um, called North Santa Fe. It's an affordable uh, development that was completed in 2015. And I, um, I, I share the city's pride in this, uh, that we were selected to be on the U.S. Green Building Council, USGBC, home tour. You'll see some publicity. That home tour is next Sunday. So that's a big honor. We've been nationally um, awarded for this um, as a sustainable and beautiful project. So um, please come to the tour. Um, all right, now we can um, get to the next slide after that. There we go. So we took very seriously. This is my well-thumbed uh, specific plan. You can see it's pretty dog-eared. We took very seriously the city's specific plan um, for downtown Vista. This is in the um, arts and culture district of that plan. Um, and, and the plan calls for a vibrant contemporary charm. So that's something I think we hope you'll see. Um, strong pedestrian connectivity and uh, an area that working artists uh, are able to practice their craft because Vista is so well known um, really as, in, as an artist um, uh, area. So we humbly, respectfully uh, say this project may be a cornerstone project to create a sense of place for this arts and culture district. In, and it has three objectives as we've designed it. One is creation of an arts neighborhood, being the cornerstone to uh, really bring in um, artists and, and kind of enhance, keep artists here in that community. The, the second is to be a catalyst for future development, including other successful retail that is um, integral to the area and builds on the strengths that Vista already has. And the third, um, and, and um, uh, your staff indicated that their um, council did approve a, a development agreement, a DDA with us, um, for affordable apartments. And we are required in that DDA to also have a preference for um, local residents, artists, and veterans. Next slide. 
Um, you've already seen some of this, but maybe this also helps the aerial. The yellow areas are the parcels we would be developing, and the blue area is not available for development. That is owned by CenturyLink, and it's a fiber optic switching station, so we have to work our way around that. Um, as, as staff indicated, the smaller yellow would be, you'll see in a second, will be a three-story, and then the larger piece is a up to five-story. Next slide. Um, I know you're very aware of this area, but we've, we've got a few pictures. The, the, starting at the top, the first one uh, is uh, across the street from Guy Blumber, looking diagonally at the buildings that used to exist there and looking all the way down at the far left of the picture, that's Mr. Pickering's hotel. Um, on the, the bottom, right below there, is kind of looking the other direction toward the corner. That parking lot is, uh, that current parking lot is part of our parcel. And, and then there's kind of a close up of, of the neighboring um, building. Next slide, please. This shows mercantile as it currently exists. And so the first picture on the top left is standing right behind CenturyLink, and that fence is theirs, and that would exist. Um, as you look at the, the picture below that, that is looking at, again, I'm going to keep calling it Mr. Pickering's Hotel, but at any rate, that building looking toward Guy Blumber, and you can kind of see the others, kind of give you a, a reminder of the area. Um, now, I want to kind of talk about some of the site challenges of this city-owned land and what the project hopes to be bringing in terms of enhancements of real value for the city. So, we, um, again, at city-owned land, along Mercantile, there is a box culvert, a very big storm box culvert. And that, you can't build on that. You can drive over it. You could have parking, but you can't build a building or a garage, so it kind of narrowed our site between South Santa Fe and the rear. Um, dirt, always, dirt always wins, and it's, we have pretty high groundwater, so we've already done some exploratory geotech studies. And then the, the last point is, again, this CenturyLink parcel. It's a, a gap. And our agreement with uh, the city, our DDA, requires that there will be a screen wall in front of that in the public right away. And as, as we talk tonight, we're interested in hearing any of your thoughts about that screen wall. What we've done here is just kind of show a turquoise overload to kind of show you the area of this 50-foot gap. Next slide. Now, what we're doing on South Santa Fe is we hope to activate the street, bring it pedestrian, really make it a cornerstone of what this district should be. We are contributing. The city, as you know, it has um, major plans for the improvements of South Santa Fe, and our estimated share is about a million three, uh, 1.34 million, um, which is sidewalk parking in the roundabout. Um, and again, our, we'll talk later about height transitions. So that bullet I just want to put on the, on the back burner for a second. The next slide. As you look at the back along Mercantile, you saw what it currently looks like. And we're hoping that this activates Mercantile. But also, you can see we're planning sidewalk, parking, um, tree wells, all sorts of improvements to really be that cornerstone of how Mercantile will continue to develop along the street and really clean up that street. Next one, please. Um, just a, a note, uh, the corner of, um, at, at Guahomi, um, that part is, um, we plan for retail. Um, bet between 1,500 and 2,500 square feet is what we're looking at. Our DDA with the city allows up to 5,000, but we're not planning anything close to that. City, of course, would have approval of tenants, so that's not a, a topic here. There are probably three or four key elements about what is, what is successful retail. And before I joined Community Housing Works almost 15 years ago, I spent the prior 15 years in commercial development and development consulting. 
Um, so at, at least I've seen these things. I'm not the world's expert, but first one is, of course, visibility. You've got to see it if it's retail. You can't, you know, people want to come to the, to the business. You've you got to see where it is. So visibility, besides being on the corner, that it's not covered by, by a lot of other stuff. Two, that you plan for signage. It's got to be tasteful. It's got to be consistent with city standard, but you plan for it so it's not an afterthought because when someone's driving by or walking by, they want to know where they're going. So we've done that. Three, that um, you have parking for retail because if you don't see the parking and you don't have the parking, you're never going to get a, a good tenant in there. And I'll show you how we solve that. And the last is that you have the appropriate tenant that's, that's right for the area and you have a good broker. Um, on our team, right from the beginning, we have probably one of the, uh, your staff has actually indicated that, that we probably have the best broker in San Diego County, um, Reg Kobe from CB Richard Ellis. And he's been very generous with his time on a very small um, development here, but he's, I think, interested also in the transformative aspects that this project could bring. Next slide. So amenities both for the residents of, of this proposed development and the neighborhood. Um, again, preference for artists and veterans, and wouldn't it be great if they're veteran artists as well? Um, there will be significant workspace and a gallery um, for residents, and it will also, the, the gallery certainly will be able to be open as, as really a public benefit. And we plan that, I don't have a pointer, but we plan that kind of in this um, elevation, you're looking over here to the left, kind of the, the area behind the glass with the red wall. That's, that's a, a, a gallery space, and it's very exciting that it opens into this courtyard which is the second thing that we are, are providing. Um, our architect here will talk more about the specifics of open space and other terraces. Um, secured parking, uh, I think, which is a big benefit. Um, other typical, more typical resident amenities, which would be to the right of this courtyard, which is what we call the community room. It means a gathering space for residents, computer room for homework, and help, and, and all of these things that we provide in all of our developments, tot lots, laundry rooms. Um, you know, affordable housing tries to build community within the complex and get to know your neighbor, eyes on the street, eyes on each other, and, and it really builds a stronger community and a safer community. And um, we are strongly encouraged, in fact, by, by the tax credit um, to, to really have um, laundry rooms as opposed to individual laundries. It, it is seen as a way of gathering people together, and we plan them very well. There's minimum standards. We're, we're regulated out the kazoo on all this stuff, but um, it really is, is, a, is a, another good gathering place. Um, obviously, you know, the location's great, transit-oriented between the sprinter stations. It will be um, sustainably, uh, sustainably um, uh, constructed and maintained, and we are already part of the Circulate San Diego MOVE certification. They were very impressed with what we've already planned. Bike storage. Uh, next one. So concessions. As your staff indicated, we are asking um, consistent with density bonus for three concessions. Now, what are we not asking? We're not asking for a height. We're not asking for open space. We're not asking for setbacks. Washers and dryers, which I've already talked about. Apartment size, which is um, consistent and, and actually even exceeds the tax credit sizing. Uh, and parking. Um, so this I, illustration, I think, is, is really good because consistent with what your specific plan is asking, it asks for um, consistency with buildings around it, steps down. So over to the far right, that's Guy Blumber and that's Guahomey. So the corner where there'll be a roundabout um, comes in at about 45 feet. So it's prominent and visible for retail and, and apartments above, but lower scale. Then you have this century link where there would be a screen wall. And then we move up to the, the, the building, which is, uh, is still within the 60 feet. And then it shows the other adjacent existing on our left. Next one, please. So an another word about parking. Um, 
uh, we thought we looked at our on-site parking as all full-size spaces. I, I know there's been some discussion previously about compact. We, we haven't assumed any compact at this point, but so they're all full-size. Um, it is compliant with the state standard of affordable housing parking um, where we are between two transit areas. Um, dedicated retail parking. So if you see here on the left side of, of this rendering, there is visible parking here um, inside for uh, retail on the corner. And, and then there is parking along um, mercantile. So I think that is, um, you know, we, we plan like nine spaces for um, about 2,500 or 2,200 square feet. So um, that meets our, our, um, our goal of free retail. Um, the parking garage, which our architect will discuss more, is, is really to the right of this. So it has you know, these very tasteful um, secure gates. And it's two floors, one somewhat below ground, um, as much as we can. So, um, OK, now the next slide is, so what are we asking? is a special use permit. So the zoning, as your staff indicated, with the affordable housing bonus would have 45 apartments on this 0.82 acres. Um, we are, are really trying very hard to maximize the, the very precious city-owned land. I know Sandag has very high Reno requirements. I know your speaker earlier tonight talked about the million people. I don't, I don't know where we're going to put them either. But um, if we can accommodate tastefully 60 apartments um, versus uh, max of 45, um, we've made an, another dent. And I think it will also be um, a positive influence on the arts district. And some of the residents here may actually be part of the workforce for some of the commercial development in the city. This just gives the unit um, count of one bedroom, one bath, two bedroom, one bath, and three bedroom, two baths. Um, now I'm going to introduce uh, Diego Velasco again, who is principal uh, with MW Steel, and he's going to talk about some of the more specific architectural. Good evening, Chair and fellow commissioners. Thank you for your time. And I'm really pleased to be able to be here and present this project. It really has been a pleasure working with Community Housing Works uh, in particular, um, looking at all of the kind of active uses that um, they're trying to bring to the South Santa Fe corridor. Next slide, please. Uh, I won't, Mary Jane really covered a lot of the items that relate to the building's design and programming, but I thought that this slide demonstrates um, kind of the concept that we have a number of different active uses fronting on South Santa Fe to really try to uh, encourage um, a vibrant um, street environment um, with a, about 2,500 square feet of commercial retail on the corner, um, 2,000 uh, or more square feet of active community spaces, including a community room and a residence uh, manager's office uh, and other uses there for the residents uh, indoors. Um, about 2,000 square feet of more or more of courtyard uh, that will face South Santa Fe and allow some of the other spaces to open into it um, and really helps to break up the building and then the artist space. So we really have a number of different uses that, I, that, that we think um, kind of fulfill the, 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 the mission of the specific plan or sort of the spirit and policies and, go and goals of the specific plan to make this area really an active um, main street for the, for, the, for the artist district next street. Uh, this slide is looking sort of the other way that you're looking from South Santa Fe back toward a mercantile. And we thought this would be helpful as sort of an axonometric view as you're flying ab above the building to show just the sheer amount of open space that we're providing for the residents um, with obviously the courtyard is a significant piece of that, but also terracing back above the retail on the first floor. We have um, ample terraces across the front edge of the building. And then on the top floor, uh, the building also steps back and provides um, roof decks for the residents. We 
reserved the middle section of the building as well for a roof deck or outdoor space um, for the residents. Um, could be for the teens, a place that they can, you know, sort of hang out or, or for, um, for artists. Um, we also have almost every unit has a balcony, a generously sized individual balcony. Uh, as well, and you can see in the small building on the corner on Guahomi, there's also quite a bit of deck space there. So all in all, we really are meeting or exceeding the requirements of the specific plan in terms of outdoor space and really looking to your ideas about, um, you know, what kinds of spaces um, are appropriate next. Um, I speak a little bit about the massing and form because we really felt that this was an important thing to take seriously. The courtyard allows us to break up the form. The really initial impetus behind the design was to try to make the building really look like three buildings, and the courtyard helps us break up the building that way. But another thing that we were keen on was roof line variation, um, bringing some gabled roofs to kind of harken back to the vernacular residential uh, uh, aesthetic in the surrounding area, um, and, and really to begin to kind of break up the scale and bulk of the building. The upper story step backs really help to do that as well. Next. Um, we put a lot of attention on the corner with Guahomi um, for all the reasons that Mary Jane mentioned in terms of uh, trying to activate the retail space, make sure that it's very transparent, um, but also to allow maybe a little bit of outdoor seating area for the retail. This is a really important gateway to the artist district, and so we think that this helps to mark that and to really send the signal that this is an important part of the, of the neighborhood. Another thing I'll point out is that we have in part because of the parking configuration, we're really trying to maximize the amount of parking that's structured. We have 12 to 15 feet of, of, um, of floor to floor height or clear height for the retail, which is great because sometimes you really want to maximize that to get as much transparency into the space. Next. Uh, the final, this is the final slide, just to talk a little bit about some of the materials. Um, we are envisioning that we would have a concrete on the base to really kind of differentiate the retail and the active street uh, uses from the rest of the building, a nice smooth stucco for, for a good portion of the building, com combining that with some metal uh, accents and uh, some color accents. And then um, I didn't speak much about the screen, but we're looking at uh, uh, ideas for that. Maybe it's a perforated metal panel or something like that to begin to screen not just the garage but maybe for the century link property as well so these are some of the the materials and i believe staff may have the materials board with them that was submitted so from here i'll pass it off to mary jane just to close up and um, welcome your your questions i'm uh, available for for any questions thank you just in closing i, I wanted to add i believe you have in your packets a letter of, of support uh, about at least the concept from the arts commission we would be remiss if we were proposing um a, a homes that are directed to local uh, residents and artists if we hadn't worked with the arts commission so we've been attending their meetings and talking and met with them and a month ago in september we did really this kind of presentation. They had very lively questions. We, we really were um, a lot of, lot of interest in questions, so um, that should be in your packet. Again, thank you, and we're here to hear your ideas and questions. Thank you. Thank you. Um, commissioners, do you have questions of applicant and the staff, or should we t take public testimony first? I'm okay with public testimony. Public testimony. Commissioner Garrison? Yeah, just a clarification on uh, Commissioner Looney's question about, uh, about uh, exceptions. They've asked to go from 121 to 83 parking spaces. The question is, what else could they ask for and how low can they go? In other words, they're 25% below what is required. Can they go 50% below? What is, what is the cutoff? So they have, um, as Mary Jane had indicated, the uh, state requirements or tax credit requirements, there are minimum standards they have to meet. So they, there's going to be a point where you can't go lower than that. 
Um, and so the standards that they're looking for, the parking, the unit size, uh, they're trying to adhere to the state requirements um, to meet that. So hopefully that answers your question. So you're saying this meets the state requirements? They have to in order to access um, or to be eligible for funding. So this meets that yes. standard? Okay. The second question uh, relates to amenities. And, uh, uh, you know, on, on the staff report, it says there's a gallery, artist workspace, residential amenity space, and a courtyard area. But the presenter talked about tot lots. I, I don't see tot lots. The uh, staff's description is mainly to illustrate or to identify the three to meet the minimum requirements. So I think they're uh, portraying to you or listing for you the planning commission as to all of their amenities. And certainly uh, their list is more inclusive. We do plan, in fact, tax credit requires um, age appropriate tot lots. So we, we do plan those. Um, a, a small one in the very small building that only has eight apartments, and then one in the area of the larger area, um, and a significant amount, again, besides the outdoor active area, um, you know, the, the, the roof areas, et cetera, and the, um, uh, the inside. Again, we do a very active, robust service program of working with uh, both the adults and the children, um, including you know after school and and, and a number of, of different uh, things. So the, the computer room, the um, what I call the community room, uh, that is adjacent to the computer that has a, a kitchen for resident gatherings for science projects. There's an on-site uh, resident manager office, the leasing office, and in tax credit projects, the resident, the manager must reside on site, which is great because they're part of the, they, they know because that's where they live too. Um, so that's just some of the things we're thinking of. But with, with that number of apartments, there could be 50 to 70 children. Mm -hmm. So it looks to me like most of the design is for teenagers, computer rooms, artists, but um, not well, for the small kids. Sir, you know, um, our North Santa Fe is 68 apartments, and it has one tot lot, and it's really um, thriving. Um, it, it's just an example of, of one here. We, we own and have uh, built from scratch uh, more than 20 developments. We own almost 40, um, most in San Diego. And so we of all people would not want to build and own something that is not going to meet the needs of our, our residents. So there, there, there will be children. Some people won't have children and some will. Uh, and, you know, I think there can be very active art programs as well for children. So I, th I think there's a variety you're of You're talking things. concepts, not... We, well, we actually know. have, I don't, I don't think we included um, and, and Diego perhaps can, you know, we actually have a, uh, included in our set of plans, there, there was a uh, area of the community areas, that, that's in there. So somewhere in this, I don't, it wasn't in my presentation to actually show you the floor plan of these, of these particular okay, areas. Okay, I, I just want to make sure I didn't miss anything. We'll get back to that. Thank you. Commissioner Loney, you have a question for staff for the applicant? Yes, for staff. Patsy, could you explain to, uh, to me what the parameters we have as a planning commission to work within for parking and for amenities to meet state and then city policy? Because we've got these two entities. We've got the city policy that you know, we've, we've worked on and we're familiar with, parking, the amenities, and open space. Now we've got the state requirements. Where do we cross the line? What do we have? I mean, does the state dictate the parking spaces? So basically, we can't say anything about the 80-some parking spaces. That's true. Um, so the state density bonus law, as far as the concessions are concerned, um, and the particular situation where the 83 is what they're going to provide, and it does not meet the city standards, uh, it is something that the state does allow 
uh, the developer to actually ask for in the form of a concession or meeting their state requirements at a bare minimum. So that's what they're trying to do here as being 100% affordable housing projects. So in answer to your question, there's not much in the form of the city contesting that. Okay. Now what about amenities? Because city policy is that we've got so many dwelling units and we're supposed to have a certain number of amenities to go with those dwelling units. Yeah, according to our design guidelines, 50 or units or greater, you must have a minimum or total of three amenities um, that are required for the project. So the ones that are listed or proposed to be part of the project, uh, whether it's the, the gallery or the courtyard space area, um, the community room, um, as they present, the developer or the applicant presents as being part of the amenities, uh, can be used towards uh, meeting the amenities. Remember that in our design guidelines, we have a list of examples, but they're not all inclusive. It's not limited to only those items that are listed in our design guidelines. So it, le it leaves up to also the planning commission uh, for consideration of what's appropriate amenity for the project. And then the last item for um, density. The city has their guidelines and the state has their guidelines. So if, if it's 100% affordable housing, they can increase that density by 35%. That's correct. Okay. Thank you, Patsy. Sure. Commissioner Kramer. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, my questions are for Mary Jane. Going to get your exercise tonight. Um, I'd like to compare the North Santa Fe project to this project, um, and I don't. I, maybe Patsy, um, maybe you could ring in on Paseo Point. So comparing North Santa Fe to this um, project, to um, to the the artist portion, are the apartment sizes about the same? Yes. Um, and I know in the North Santa Fe, you've you've got underground parking. And um, is the ratio of apartments to the parking about the same? No. Uh, North Santa Fe has more parking, and there are empty parking spaces every time you go there. And uh, cars have to be registered to be in the garage, and it's, it runs empty. As, and we, we do this. We've done parking studies um, f throughout our portfolio um, of actually anecdotal um, as well as something that we will will check for, you know, a, a certain certain days every week, um, including like a Sunday night when most people are home, and a Tuesday night, and a and a Thursday morning, and really to see because the last thing we want is to be a bad neighbor. Uh, we when we build, we will own this forever. I mean, we have a, um, the city is a 99 year ground lease and we are income restricted by tax credits for 55 years. So we don't want to own something that is going to spill out. I think if I may just say, I mean, a lot of times I think people have seen what happens when people can't afford their apartment and you get two families doubling up. And in those, that's a market rate apartment with two families living there. And it really um, is hard on the families and it's really hard on the neighbors because you get cars everywhere and people are spilling out. Affordable housing is very, very tightly regulated about how many people can be in what size of apartment, et cetera. So we, we feel very confident. Okay, so now we have uh, North Santa Fe is directly across the street from um, the transit center. Um, this project is further up the street, and it's kind of in between the two. So in your experience in this business, do you think that, um, not that the parking here will be an issue, but you'll probably, do you feel you'll have less empty spots here at the, at the new one because of the proximity? I mean, they're going to have to walk. Um, we may. I have less empty, but or it may be um, because we have a, sl a smaller ratio. It may be right sized, okay. um, and and I think more and more people. You know, it took us. Um, our office is in Mission Valley, and 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 I live in North County, but my office is down there. And it took us uh, an hour and forty minutes to get here today from our office. So, as more and more people 
get that frustrating, you know, longer commute to jobs, I think that the Sprinter will become a better tool as it connects everywhere, and I think eventually more and more people use public transit. Because I, I hail you positively for what you've done for North Santa Fe as the same developer for Paseo Point. I mean, I've walked through, you know, the... Um, Vietnam veterans things, and I peek around, and I look at the parking in Paseo Point, and it's like, wow. Again, about half of them are empty, and it's 8.30, 9 o'clock at night. So I, what you're telling me, um, I, I believe, and I know from the presenta your presentation before and Paseo Point, uh, you've done a very good job at explaining the how the, the that you have to run these facilities, and it's not you build it, you're gone, and, no. and it's left for somebody else. And I, I think you've done a really good job in both. Um, question I do have, um, so the five-story building is five stories above ground level, one story of parking underneath? Um, Diego, why don't you come Half. up? The parking is configured such that we go five feet below ground because the water table is fairly high in that area. Mm -hmm. And by doing that, we're able to get two levels of parking. This is to try to really get as many parking spaces as possible in what is otherwise a very tight site. And so the overall height then is 15. So each parking level is 10 feet floor to floor. We're going down five feet. Okay. So you're so it isn't here versus here. It really l will somewhere look like your drawings. It's okay. It's, it's somewhere in between. Yes. Okay. In the five-story building, is there elevators? Yes. Oh, hallelujah. Both buildings will have elevators. Both buildings. Yes. Terrific. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I have more questions later, but thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Grimm. Yeah, I think this might be a question for Diego, but um, your single-story uh, retail element along um, South Santa Fe, it's a little bit hard to tell from the, um, the elevations. Is, is, there any, is there any relief in that area, or is it all just a straight shot along, along South Santa Fe? There is some relief. Uh, at the corner with Guajome, we've notched it in, and in large part, it was to try to get that outdoor seating area. And then, of course, you have the gap with a sensory link parcel, and we're exploring ideas to do some sort of screening so that we have at least the, the bay dimensions of the retail continues, and so you have a continuity there. Up until you get to the courtyard, then obviously it comes back in. Uh, so those are kind of the, the push and pull there. Is there a screen wall along? Uh, what separates the courtyard from the... Um sidewalk area is there a is it fenced we're is still a we're still working out the landscape design but we're considering some options it could be it could be it needs to be tastefully done we don't want to have you know a bunch of fen fencing there because again we're trying to activate the street but it could be a combination of some tastefully done fencing with planters um, and and sort of low walls there so that you can see into the courtyard but it could be secured if, if necessary Commissioner Jackal. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. This my question is um, also for Mary Jane, please. Following up on Commissioner Kramer's question, just about the three-bedroom uh, units. In my worst nightmare, I'm thinking, okay, we've got six adults living there and needing parking spaces and you're saying that through because of the requirements under which um, you are designing this that that would not be allowed that's correct that, that that's all i can say yes and also people will know when they come in how many parking spaces they have and so um you know i i think it's um Look, I mean, uh, our experience is that people of, of lower income don't have that many cars, generally. They really don't. I mean, there's this idea that they have a lot, but our experience in all of our developments, all through, every, we go from national city 
up to here in Carlsbad and Escondido, and we just opened a brand new beautiful seniors development uh, in Oceanside. Um, Central Valley, we're in Northern California and several developments, and it's consistent. Okay, thank you. <coughs> Commissioners, we've got uh, four people the, uh, from the public that would like to address us on the project. Can we go ahead and hear from the public now? And, and um, then we'll get back to our comments. Okay, uh, Sarah Lawyer. Good evening, Planning Commissioners, Chair, and Staff. My name is Sarah Lawyer, and I reside here in the City of Vista on Ocean View Drive. I've listened to a lot of the concessions that are made because of affordable housing, so some of what I may say kind of sounds against that, but I am opposed to the current plan due to the amount of parking, or more specifically, the lack of parking which is being proposed, deviating from the number required from the downtown Vista specific plan, both for commercial and residential spaces. This, of course, comes with the unit size being compressed for your code and for the affordable housing. The difference between the required amount and the proposed amount in these plans leaves a variance of 38 spaces for the residential. I'd like to know from the developer or the commission where those extra 38 vehicles are going to park. On Mercantile, which I assume will have the lots directly behind this development someday built on, on Guahomey, or across the street up Terrace Drive, which already may be impacted with another project, Terrace Lofts. Conceding parking is too much. As a property owner and manager of both single-family and multi-unit rentals, I can say that parking requirements are crucial, not only to the tenants, but the surrounding neighbors. As I said, I live on Ocean View Drive, and the overflow of tenant and guest parking during the day and evenings from Paseo Point fluctuates between five and more than 24. Vehicles parking up Ocean View from South Santa Fe. Maybe those are ones that aren't registered. We've actually had to call and have abandoned vehicles towed, and they were from Paseo Point. I just ask that we really take to heart density and parking as we continue to infill our downtown, which I know we need, and I know we need the housing, but at what cost to the surrounding neighbors? Thank you very much. I appreciate your time. Um. Alan Pickering. Uh, good evening, uh, Chairman Rossler and uh, Planning Commissioners. Um, I own the hotel next door at 537 South Santa Fe. Um, we, uh, from Vista, lived in Vista for 20 years. Kids went to uh, Breeze Hill, uh, Madison, RBB, they're now in college. Um, like what the city's doing downtown, really, it, what you've all done is great. We all we put a letter in. I, I hope you got it. In the, um, so we for a project next door to us. We for a great looking project. It's just the size and scale of what they're doing, right up against us. Um, in the one drawing, they've got it. Uh, our building at 30 feet. It's actually 22 feet, and they, they've got a 60 foot uh, height. So it's just going to dwarf us. So all we're asking is, can you set it back and get some landscaping or something to make it not so imposing? Um, that's all I have. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, Dana Estrada. Estrella. Estrada. Good evening. How are you? Um, my name is Dana Estrada. I am a resident on Terrace Drive. I've lived there for 16 years. I'm also the, uh, the on-site manager of the apartments. And when we got all these notices, we were kind of worried. I'm kind of with her over there 
as far as parking goes, it's very hard. I have people sneaking into our complex, parking, um, and trying to keep track of who belongs there and who don't, it's very hard. So to have more apartment complexes across the street is going to be very hard for us. Um, there's a house on Terrace Drive that has a lot of parties. And when they have the parties, they have lots of people come, and a lot of their friends park in the... Um, the uh, what do you call it? in the parking lot of the pawn shop, and they park all up into terrace, um, all the way up to almost to ocean view. Um, some of my complaints that I have is that the five story I was told there's going to be five story on the corner of Santa Fe and Terrace. I don't know how that one's going to work with parking. <laughs> I really don't. But some of the complaints that we all have. I'm sure everybody's in agreed, agreement with it, is when all of this started, all the building, um, I'm all for beautifying Vista, but when they took out that, that extra lane, um, I like the roundabouts, but what I don't like about it is they made Paseo Point so pretty, but at the same time, the park that you were talking about, um, the Veterans Park, you have the the water fountain there. The homeless are taking baths in it. Um, it, it it's not a pretty sight. It's just not. Um, we were all told in the beginning that the water fountain was supposed to be in that roundabout. But when there was that accident in it, uh, they changed it up and they made the wooden structure. And then they put the fountain in the little park. And I think it should have been in reverse, um, just to, to keep away some of the homeless. It's very hard. A lot of people like to walk to the movie theater, and it's almost kind of dangerous. Um, the other thing is, sorry to say, sir, <laughs> but the little hotel motel, I've been there for 16 years. Um, there's a lot of people that are out of there that um, when I was there, there was, it wasn't a good hotel. And like right now, I've had people telling me how they're constantly being um, asked for money from people in that building, things like that. I just don't understand some of the buildings that they're keeping, and, and then they're getting rid of some that should have never left in the first place. So I don't know. I just think that they're planning, especially down where Santa Fe and Vista is, there's so much traffic coming from the north, south, east, and west, and you've got that, that little cluster of lights with the ra railroad track. I literally sat there for almost 15 minutes just trying to turn left to go towards the railroad tracks um, coming from South Santa Fe. And my light just would not change. Every other light was changing, but mine wasn't. So now that they've made it one way each way, they say it's because it, it makes the traffic flow more. I'm finding it to be more clogged up. And it, it, they've just taken away too much. You know, they're, they're making too much. It's, it's nice, but they need to stop and think what they're doing because there's just some of these things were just you can't even use. I know some people in Paseo Point apartments, they're trying to get out of that apartment complex because of the way it was built, the, um, what it was built on, um, and then the area. They want to leave because they say it's very dangerous over there. So they just, they just want to leave that area. And I'm hoping that if you build the roundabout, I'm actually for the roundabout. There's been too many accidents on my corner trying to get out of that street. So I'm for that, but what I'm not for is if you're going to build this nice area, um, the five-story, I hope it's not going to turn out like Paseo Point, where we got homeless over there now. That's what I'm more worried about. Thank you. Thank you. Mark Robinson. Yes. 
I don't know if this is a statement or a question. A couple. Higher density, narrower streets. Retail, the one you already built, is empty. Three vacancies, at least four, over there by the theater, empty. Okay? You have what is going to be the financial benefit for the taxpayers of Vista. I don't see it. If you've got retail space in the current places you've already put in a Paseo, they're empty. I walk by there all the time. They're empty. You have the parking issue. You have mercantile behind it. I can just imagine being in a five-story building, looking out my back door or my balcony at mercantile. I mean, unless you're going to condemn all those buildings and put something else in there. The ambience, this isn't there. This is Vista. Okay. This isn't Carlsbad by the ocean. This isn't Coronado. This isn't a lot of different coastal areas. We are basically buying in to the low-income things that the other cities around here are not being held accountable for. We're asking our community to get into something that other communities are probably passing off to us. And if Vista is going to be a place that's going to be vibrant, if it's going to be something that is going to be an appeal for people from the outside wanting to move into Vista, I certainly don't see this as a solution to that. I don't have, I mean, I, my heart goes out to people, low income, been there, done that. And I, I understand because I got children that are of the age 25 and 31. You know, this is Southern California. I don't see it happening for them like I struggled for. And I don't have, you know, any problem with that. The homeless issue is big time issue. I go downtown constantly. I take my dog down there. And I'm seeing, you know, the caravans of shopping carts. I'm seeing junk on the street. I'm seeing people sleep in the entryways of storefronts. I'm seeing this constantly. And I don't know why that a downtown area like this has to be the dropping point that isn't First of all, I don't think the I don't think this is whole this is wishful thinking. You guys are actually going to rent these spaces. I really don't think that's going to happen, because I like to show you, I like you to show me all the, the people that are flooding to the doors of the ones that are already built. They're not there. And uh, I mean, it's just you got one lane down there. We're going to raise density. Oh, that's a great solution. That's real smart. And it's kind of like, what are the what are people thinking? Are they really in the real world, or is this concept a concept and a dream? Because I don't see it as a reality. And I really doubt very much that this thing is going to, this project is going to turn out how you guys really want it. I was born in this area. I've been a San Diego County resident since 1951. I bought my house in Vista 37 years ago. And I just think that this is a pipe dream. Just my comment, my observations, and thank you. Thank you. And Matt Luckenboat? Uh, I think this is an interesting plan, and I'd like to hear more about it. Uh, what I didn't hear about is what is the planned uh, renewable energy at the property? And also, what is the planned uh, traffic flow, specifically in and out of the property in relation to the street? We'll get those questions answered for you. All right. That concludes the speaker slips that I have for the project. Uh, so we'll open it up to Commissioner discussion, and Commissioner Looney has been very patient. Yes. I had a question for the applicant, for Diego. Um, particularly in, on the street level, you've got the courtyard where the laundromat opens up to it, and adjacent to the laundromat is the parking. Is the wall of that parking that's common to the parking in the courtyard. Is that a solid wall or is that open to where if I'm in the parking structure, I can look out through that courtyard? We would like for it to be partially open. We want to screen it because you don't want to have headlights of the cars facing into the courtyard or you may not want to see fully into the garage. 
but there is some benefit to having some transparency so you get eyes on the space. We'll have to work through some of the building code limitations of that. But we okay. Because if your first level, your subterranean level is at five feet below grade, right. and your courtyard is at grade, the headlight issue shouldn't be an issue. That's a good point. That's right, except for the fact that we have another level above that. Um, so, and I think on subsequent drawings, if you could maybe refine, give us a little better site plan sections, and maybe. some sections mm -hmm. to where it shows a little bit more of what sure, is sure, being proposed. Yeah. Thank That's you. That's a good suggestion. Yeah. All right. Um, commissioners, in uh, uh, our comments section on the project, the first uh, item that we look at is site design and grading. Uh, do you have any comments for the applicant uh, concerning the site design? <clears throat> And parking and traffic is another category. So um, basically the site design. Commissioner Jackal. Thank you. On site design, I, I am concerned. I understand about the required setbacks, but I am concerned about the proximity two feet away of the, um, the five-story building to the hotel. I, I really think that's a problem. <clears throat> and are, are we talking about parking and? We'll do that later. Uh, okay. Okay. Commissioner Bell. Thank you. <clears throat> um, when you come back around, some more information, and I assume you'll get this as you do your final plan to the city on the limitations of what you can and can't build around the existing um, utility structure that's there, the CenturyLink. Um, regardless of how I feel about the project, I commend you for working around that because I know there was some issues trying to make that work. So um, that's, uh, I, but I'd, I'd be curious when you submit your final to see what limitations you face um, Safety-wise, I don't think emissions are a problem, but anything like that, whether it exists or not, I'd, I'd, be, I'd like to see that as part of the packet since it's so close to the two buildings beyond just the design of the facade you end up using. Thanks. Commissioner Grimm. Uh, yes, thank you. Um, normally, you know, the, most of the, the experience, you know, that I've, I've had with mixed-use projects have been where the Retail's on the bottom, residential's on top. I, I think it's much more difficult to make a project work when you have a project that's basically separated. You've got your retail on one point, and you've got your residential behind that. Uh, it's, um, it's a lot of work for the architect, because you, you said all the right things. You said, let's, let's engage the street, uh, make it active, activate the street. It's a little bit harder to do that when your residential's sitting behind that. Um, but with that said, um, and that's one of the things I'm going to be looking at when the project comes back. How does it, uh, act, you know, how does it activate with the street? Uh, but with that said, you've also been given a very difficult site and a very difficult task to try to make that work. So that has to, my first comment kind of has to be tempered with the last, with the last um, thing I said as well. It's just, it's a difficult site. So anyway, I just wanted to basically make the comment. That's going to be one of the things that I'm looking at when this comes, comes back. Very good. Um, I had one comment for you um, in looking at the parking garage and the location of where the trash enclosures are going to be. Um, it seems like there was a planter on the street in front of that. So uh, when you come back, I'd like to see uh, some thought given as to how the trash truck is going to service uh, your, uh, your bays. But I agree with the other comments uh, that you, uh, you've heard uh, on the on the site design, commissioners, our our next category is architecture. Did you have any any comments or questions on or comments on architecture, Commissioner Jackal? Not on the uh, <clears throat> for me, not on the architecture as a whole, um, which I pretty much like. Um, this is very picky, but I feel there are too few kitchen cupboards. And the three-bedroom uh, site plan that I could measure uh, <clears throat> has less kitchen cupboard space than the two-bedroom. So just 
people need places to put things. All right. Any uh, Commissioner Kramer? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I like the architecture. I like the, the different roof heights and the levels. Um, I think you did quite well with that. Thank you. Okay. Commissioner Looney? Along the same lines, you would, Diego, you'd use the term roof line variations. Um, I, I think there's a little bit too much variation. <laughs> um, I think what you've done with the mercantile side works great. What you've done on the Guahomi side, I think, works really well. The gable roofs, um, it, it almost takes it back too much to a traditional home. And I think maybe it's the massing of it, but if you can maybe put a little bit more of a contemporary twist on that gable roof, I think it's going to help the building. Because the back side, you've got kind of a modern Bauhaus style. Um, on the Guahomi side, you've got that tower with the slanted roof, the metal uh, siding. That's fun. It's playful. Um, but I think if you could somehow integrate that gable roof that faces North Santa Fe to make it a little bit more playful, um, I think that would be beneficial. Um, one of the other things that is, um, I think, important, and it's on this... Um, View number one that's on the upper left. We've got the west elevation of that five-story structure. That becomes a predominant wall that is seen as we leave Center City. Um, if there was some way to add some fenestration to that to create some shadow, I think that would really help that elevation. I like the way that you have put that three-story structure on the corner and you've got that roof line variation. But coming out of downtown, looking at that wall, if, again, if we can create some shadows, I think it'll help. And Patsy, I don't know if there's any um, mitigation that can be done on that um, fiber optics site to where can we get a projection from that wall closer to that property line. Um, but that might give them a little bit more wiggle room to design some of that fenestration. The colors, I think, are going to be fine. The massing. Um, oh, one other point. Um, the gable roof overhang that faces Santa Fe, if we could push that back a little bit, because right now we've got the 10-foot setback from that first level um, structure. And with the overhang coming out as far as it does, it almost as if we've got this four-story wall that I think could be, again, handled maybe a little bit differently to give us a little bit more variation. So, hope that's not too much information, but that's what I see, and I thank you. For me personally, um, I thought the color scheme was a little blah. Uh, I, it's basically whites and grays. Uh, you do have the red balconies on the mercantile side. I th think it would be great to do that on the South Santa Fe side also. Um, this, the mercantile elevation, I, I agree with Commissioner Looney, is, is tending to be kind of a, a five-story wall. And I know you worked hard to stay below 60 feet, but you are doing a use permit. So maybe you very... The white towers uh, go up a bit more to provide some, some uh, um, difference in elevation for the roof line. It's what I'm thinking about. Um, all right, commissioners, uh, the next topic is parking and traffic. Any comments on the parking and traffic? Commissioner Garrison. Yes, just one question uh, concerning entrance in into the the apartments and exit. That will be left turn and right turn out of there, correct? Yes. So, and you don't see that interfering since there's only two lanes, and you don't see that as an issue. Have we? It's on Mercantile, so it should be. It should be fine. So the, the only exit is on Mercantile? 
not on Santa Fe. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Looney? Um, along the same lines, um, as a tenant, I'm moving in, I've got my moving van. Is there an elevator, a freight elevator, that can accommodate larger pieces of furniture um, rather than having to use the pedestrian elevator? Uh, just some staging area, you know, where I drive into that parking area, or is there a loading zone outside the building? I think that's um, something that might need to be addressed simply because we've got people coming in and out of that five-story structure and it's a, you really don't want to take that stuff up the stairs. So maybe give that some thought. All right, any other comments on parking or traffic? Next one is landscape and amenities. While they're thinking about it, let me share you my, th uh, my thoughts. Um, I, I, I like what you've done so far. I would like to see maybe a program when you come back with your final submittal. Tell us who's going to do what, where, when, and, uh, and give us maybe examples in your other projects. Um, I, I would be interested in the tot lot facilities. There, there are three-story, or three-story, there are three bedroom units, and so we're anticipating that there'll be children here, so I'd like to see a plan for how those kids are gonna recreate. All right, uh, Commissioner Garrison. Uh, you just covered what I was gonna cover, oh, thank you. Sorry. No problem. And Commissioner Jackal. Likewise, <clears throat> he said exactly what I was going to ask. Okay, very good. So we're all, the commission's on the same page here. So, um, uh, commissioners, any other comments on the design of the, of the project? We're wrapping up here. Commissioner Bell? I had asked the staff um, if there was any comparison on the density at this um, location compared to the one we looked at a couple weeks ago in early design. And I, I don't need an answer right now, but I would just ask that we get some kind of uniform comparison on the dwelling units per acre in coordination with the, the bedrooms, the parking, because I know that just doing the math on this, if you change this from one, one bedroom, two bedroom, and three bedrooms to just two and three bedrooms, it would shift the number of units, but the number of bedrooms would be the same. And I'm just not clear how dwelling units per acre is defined and how we judge it on comparable lots. So I would just like some more information on that when this comes up again so we have a way to judge what the standard in the city is going forward but you don't need to address it today if there's not a resource of information we have looked at uh, density i do intend to bring back a discussion item on this particular issue in the paseo corridor in december uh, i did do a rough calculation of density for the other projects that have been built in the corridor um, the north santa fe project is at about 50 units per acre the uh, 100 main street is close to 100 units per acre and the Paseo Point project is at about 45 units per acre if you look at purely the project site and no excess right of way. And we'll talk about that further on the December meeting. That, that would be net lot area. That's correct. Okay, very good. Commissioner Looney. Another question for staff. Um, Patsy, um, the street parking adjacent to Bank of America does have a number of vehicles parked there at all hours of the day. Does the city have any type of street parking policy or time limits that um, might keep some of those vehicles off the street during particular hours of the day? There are certain locations that have that um, time limit, so I think it's something that, um, if you're asking specifically a diagonal parking that would be in front of this project, in terms of time limits, or maybe your question is more in general terms along more in Paseo? General terms, again, as we go uh, up the hill, you know, right again at the corner of B of A, across from the liquor store, um, that street always seems to have several vehicles parked along the street edge. Yeah, and so, again, as far as time limits, it's something that we can probably take a look at. We would have to talk to traffic um, about that, and there are certain areas, like in downtown, that there are certain limits, so. We have to explore that, I guess. Okay, because as we see development progress towards Civic, 
center um, drive, this probably will become more of an issue where these, <coughs> if there is an overflow or they don't want to register the cars uh, to park on site, that some of these peripheral streets may, we may see more cars lining those street sides rather than being used on the property parking lot. So that was the reason. Thank you, Bethany. All right. That seems to conclude our comments. Um, one additional comment for the applicant. Um, you've done a great job on your other project with uh, parking. Uh, I would like to see a description of that, of the parking management plan that you're going to put uh, with this project when it comes in so we can, we can understand how. I, I, think, I think you're on the right track. Uh, I like what you've done so far uh, and the other projects, so let's, uh, let's see that again. Okay, uh, commissioners, we're going to take a five-minute recess while we change out staff. Rancho kids, if you'll come on down, we'll sign your forms, and good luck. It's cool. It does. It really does. You can tell it's 7.15, 7.30, and it's starting to get a little fancy. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're required to stay here. Usually yeah. So after yeah. that, they, they start fidgeting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. I didn't know the applicant's uh, presentation was going to go that long. <clears throat> Complicated project. That's why. Yep. Yep. <laughs> He's probably closer to my level of drawing there. <laughs> He's actually better than I am already. <laughs>
All right, Gary, yeah, come on. All right, we'll get back back in order here. Um, Jesse and Grace, I have to apologize to you. Did you have comments on the last project? I had a question about the fence. Yeah, you got to come. You got to come talk at the mic. I actually had a question about the fencing between the courtyard and the sidewalk, and what they were looking for in that. But yeah, that's a good question because that wasn't clear to us either. So uh, they're supposed to clarify that when they come back on on how all of that's going to work. Yeah, good question. Thanks. All right, Mr. Ressler, are you ready for your staff report on the early design review of the Hill Drive condos? Hill Drive condos? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, thank you, Chairman Rossler and members of the Planning Commission. Uh, the project before you tonight is the early design review for the Hill Drive townhomes. The application number is P18-0346. Uh, Patsy went over the purpose of the EDR. I don't think I'll spend too much time on that tonight. Um, however, staff has uh, uh, received a proposal to develop 29 townhomes on approximately 1.41 acres. The site is located on the west side of Hill Drive, north of West Vista Way. The subject site is currently developed with a single family home. This slide provides you a photograph of the site as well as an aerial um, with the subject site identified in the red box. Uh, again, the site is 1.41 acres, one legal lot, and is currently developed with a single family home. Surrounding land uses include single family residences to the north, apartment complex to the south, single family homes to the east across Hill Drive, as well as an apartment complex to the west. The general plan land use designation for the site is high density residential, will allows for a maximum density of 21 dwelling units per acre. The zoning for the site uh, is multifamily residential, RM21, which allows for up to two stories and a maximum density again of 21 dwelling units per acre. The proposed project would require to go back in front of the Planning Commission for a site development plan review, as well as CEQA review and landscape review. The proposal includes construction of 29 townhomes within four separate buildings at a density of approximately 20.6 dwelling units per acre. The townhomes would be two stories with tuck under and basement garages with a maximum height of 20, uh, 32 feet. The makeup of the complex would be a total of 19 two-bedroom units and 10 three-bedroom units. The proposal includes uh, development of four buildings with a mix of four to 12 townhomes per building on the 1.4 acre site. In terms of parking, based on the bedroom count, uh, the site is required to provide a total of 78 parking spaces and the site plan indicates a total of 84 would be provided. That's an excess of six parking spaces um, compared to our code requirement. In terms of site amenities, the site plan indicates the, the uh, development would include a pool, rec room, various seating areas, as well as a, a designated uh, synthetic turf area. Architecturally, the project has been designed around a Mediter Mediterranean architectural style. Um, it includes uh, articulated uh, uh, walls, uh, arched uh, openings, uh, balconies with decorative railings. In terms of roofs, we have a flat roof with uh, various uh, pitched uh, tower elements. The elevation before you here on this slide uh, features the two-story townhome with a basement garage. Uh, this elevation is a two-story with a tuck under garage. In terms of floor plans, the uh, submitted information indicated that the uh, 
square footage range would be from 1,200 square foot two bedroom unit to a 1,600 square foot three bedroom unit. And with that, staff is requesting the Planning Commission provide the applicant uh, some uh, direction in terms of the design of the project. Uh, the project uh, uh, proponent, Bill Gooden, is here. Uh, Bill has not prepared a presentation. However, he will introduce himself and be available to answer questions, as well as staff is available to answer questions. And that concludes my report for tonight. Very good. Mr. Gooden? Commission and chairman and staff. It's a pleasure to be here tonight. Um, I think this is a great city to build in. I think we've designed a project that is fitting with the area and probably with, uh, is well laid out. Um, we have done two and three bedrooms, as Mike was saying, and we've got 49 garages for 29 units, and the rest are open parking spaces with 34. We have three ADA units, uh, ADA accessible units with the required parking for that also included in the project. Um, I think one of the reasons why the project works so well is the articulation. We have at the, at the top of the screen, you see the sidewalk. There's two entrances into the project in addition to the uh, driveway. So if you're walking in, you can go along the lower part of the screen. That sidewalk goes all the way through and connects to the rec room, continues through and connects the parking on both the uh, west and the east side of the project. On the uh, top of the screen, that's it, it's all in dark now because it's it's common area. But the whole the drive that the, there's a sidewalk along that that top part there too that connects everything, the, all the parking on the back side. And then you get you, you enter the units from the outside of the perimeter versus from the driveway side. So when you're walking along, you walk in into your unit, walk in, you have a courtyard for a patio. Most of the units have patios, and if you don't have a patio, if it's a second floor unit, then you'll have a uh, upper deck. I mean, a enclosed area, more than minimum size for barbecuing or whatever like that. So I think why it works is because the flow of Pedestrian traffic and the flow of vehicle vehicular traffic, they're not in conflict with each other. And um, the main common area is in the center, and we've got a pool, a spa, multiple barbecues, a fire pit, uh, tables, chairs, lounges. Um, we have the turf grass. And then the other common areas are, I would call them a satellite, so they have barbecues, tables, and chairs so that people don't have to come down to that area if they want to do something. But they also have their backyards. I mean, every unit's got a good-sized private, um, uh, private area. So um, that's it. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Um, commissioners, any questions for staff or the applicant? Commissioner Kramer. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have a, a question for probably the ap applicant, Mr. Gooden. I get real confused. So I'm looking at this picture here, and I know we've got 29 units, but I can't figure out where they are. So if you could just use oh. <laughs> Building A and tell me how many units are in Building A. Okay, Building A, you, the line down the center divides the front and the back. So there's one, two, three, four in the back. Oh. And then you've got one, two, three, four in the front over the garages. Got it. Got so it. So Building C is the large building. You've got one, two, three, four, five, six in the back. Mm -hmm. And then you got six, same size, they're exact, they're, they're flip-flop units mm -hmm. over the garages, um, but they all enter from the, from the perimeter. So then building D, uh, you've got three town, you got two townhomes on the bottom side there in the rec rooms, that little cubicle. And then you have one unit over garages on the left and one unit over garages at the, uh, along the street. Unit B, you've got three townhomes um, coming in from the, the perimeter 
and then one unit over the garages on the right and one unit over the garages on the main drive. And are these uh, rental or are these um, condominiums? No, they're condominiums. They're, 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 they're sized and amenity-wise, they're definitely going to be condominiums. Perfect. Thank you. I have no other questions at this time. Thank you. Commissioner Grimm. Uh, yeah, when I was uh, a number of years ago, I lived in a condom project fairly similar to this, and I, the pool was a, a lot of consternation for the HOA. I'm just wondering, is there, obviously you must feel this way, you wouldn't put it in, but is, do you find that it, it's going to be difficult for a small HOA like this to be able to operate? i got to be honest with you. I, 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 I always like the spas, and this one we had a big enough area we can get the pool in, but it's one of those things where I'm... Uh, we try to do studies to figure what people really want. For example, the recreation room. I mean, one day it's a gym and one day it's a recreation room because it kind of depends on what people want. And right now, people are tending to be more gym-oriented, but we just called it a recreation room and we're trying to figure out exactly what we're going to do with it. The pool is, uh, I have no problem uh, providing a spa on it because, you know, I don't think the pools get used that much, but I do want to provide, it's a good centralized location for amenities, so um, not 100% on my drawing board, it's, but it's, it's an option. That yeah, I'm not advocating you get rid yeah. of it, I just worry that sometimes small associations have difficulty with Well, that's the same thing with the rec room. I mean, when I'm designing this thing, I'm looking going, yeah, you know, you got 29 units, you got to pay for the rec room, it's got a kitchen, it's got a bathroom, you got all these amenities you're trying to provide for the tenants, but it's the same amenities you'd provide if you had a 70 units, so it's, it, it does get a little does, does get a little expensive for the HOA on some units, thanks. Thank you. Commissioner Gerritsen? Yes, could you uh, tell me how high this is going to be compared to the uh, house above it? In other words, is oh, this blocking the view of the house above it? Uh, we, I haven't done a study on that, but the street is rising, so I, they, there are the back of the lot is, from where the driveway is, the back of the lot is approximately, I think, six or seven, maybe eight feet higher just at the PL. And then you've got, and it keeps going. So I, I don't know, uh, I don't, we haven't done a study on that, so I can't answer that. Uh, second question, any uh, improvements on the street? Yes, I, um, I'm tasked with a number of expensive improvements. Um, Underground utilities because the power pole, well, we have to widen the street. I have to do a five foot widening. And um, the power poles ended up in, in the sidewalk. But since it's over five units, we would have had to do it anyway. So we're, we're underground all the utilities. And then we have uh, the, wide, the dedication and widening of the street. Sidewalk? Uh, sidewalk, yes. Yes. Okay. But what happens if you, the, the project down to the south, um, <laughs> the sidewalk basically does that, and then our project's out here. So we're just going to continue the sidewalk that was already designed in the uh, previous older project. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Commissioner Jackal. Thank you. Um, is there a fence of any kind around the whole project? Yes, uh, we would plan on, well, there's fencing at each one of the patios. So like when you're looking at, uh, let's take building B, for example, the three patio, you have the sidewalk, there's a five foot sidewalk that comes in from the street. And then each one of those patio areas is fenced in uh, separately. Not, we're not putting the fence on the, on, on, the, on the PL, yeah. Okay, all right, thank you. Which actually helps the adjoining neighbors because you've got a little bit of retaining wall there anyway. If you put a, you have a little three-foot retaining wall, you put a five-foot fence, you got a big barrier there. But we're, we're, we're set back quite a bit from the uh, PL. Any other questions of staff for the applicant? Okay, thank you very much. Thank uh, you. We do have a couple of people that would like to speak. Uh, Randy Pickering. 
I'm Randy Pickering. I represent Tatcha Development LLC. We own the building at 1365 West Vista Way. They don't have too much of a problem with the project in itself. It's just that's the most dangerous area in Vista. I used to have a sheriff assigned to the apartment complex to cross the street. You pulled the funding. I've had probably, oh, 10 or 15 windows shot out over the last few years. There was a murder there last month. The cops set up the command center in my parking lot and ran, ran ops from there in my video from my place. Um, car was hijacked almost by one of my employees trying to leave work two weeks ago. About three or four years ago, uh, we had a guy pull a nine millimeter out of his trunk and pointed at me like I hid behind my contractor's door. We had an hour and a half response time from the sheriff's office. I carry a nine millimeter all the time. I told the captain last week I'm gonna start carrying my SCAR, which is a uh, special combat assault rifle out there. And he says, you can do it. He said, I'm just afraid with all the gang members out there with guns, you're gonna get shot. Um, as some of you may remember, I think you might have been on the uh, traffic commission. I was able to get Art Brown and the traffic commission to go along with me and we got it all the way through through the city council on the consent calendar to make uh, Hill Street on my side of the street next to my building so it was all red, so there were no cars there. Those cars don't move. It's a real traffic hazard out there. There's too many cars parked there. The sheriff was out there a couple weeks ago and he said, Randy, you've got to try to figure out a way to get these cars. And I said, I did it. And what happened? Mayor Vance, after I left the consent calendar, he pulled it back and changed it on me and then the city manager called me the next day and started laughing at me. Not much fun. John knows I had a lease out there a couple months ago and you guys screwed me on that for about $4,400 a month. I had another tenant renting from me for $7,500 a month and you guys sent in a SWAT team with machine guns and kicked doors in yelling and scared all my employees. Mr. So I've had quite a problem with not only the crime and stuff, and another project like this will bring up a lot of different traffic uh, issues that need to be dealt with, but the crime needs to be dealt with. Okay. I know what you're saying, come back to the, to the right. point, but the point is I've had a lot of problems out there. The city's cost me a lot of money. I, we continually do graffiti. The kids on the skateboards because they don't have any place to play in that goddamn apartment break out my windows with the skateboards and you know those are eight hundred dollars a shot it's cost me a lot of money this is not a fun place to do business or be in business or own a building i moved to carlsbad i used to live on ocean view drive i pity those people that you're going to do that to and i'm glad i don't live up there anymore you know, and I went through that in the early 80s when you guys took 14 properties over there and made them CD commercial in Ocean View, and I lucky I got seven of them rezoned back the way they should be. I was involved in all those planning commissions for seven years, two of them, and you never did take any of our plans. So, you know, I'm a little frustrated with you guys. I want that project to work, okay. but it's got to be safe, and you need better, you need, you're going to need twice as many sheriffs as you have right now to be able to get the crime down out there. Okay. The, the sheriff said, look, Randy, we only have four units running at any one time in Vista. And he, cause he asked me the question, I told him how many, and he said, how'd you know that? I said, I've had so much crime out here and problems with this apartment complex next door that I know all these things. I'm educated, you guys are here too much. So I don't know what you want to do about it, but uh, I'm not very happy business owner. and I'm, I mean, the guy's going to build a nice project. It'll probably enhance the community up there. I think so. The problem is you've got a terrible apartment complex next door that people don't even read English. They can't read the signs. I have cars towed. I've got real problems out there, and I have to threaten them to move, and then they pull guns on me and want to beat me up with bats. Okay. We understand your concern, I think. You think you do? I think you I think. Did you, I make my point? You've been, you've my been clear? pretty clear. It's yes. the most dangerous place in Vista. Hijackings, problems, guns, and we got need some help. And I don't know if you build this with all the traffic and what you did to us on the traffic commission, we got a problem. Am I over my time? Yes. Okay, I'm sorry. Thank you. Matt? Yeah, I didn't know I'd have to follow that. Um, yeah, I have more trivial concerns. Uh, I'm sure it is going to be 
a fine property to live in. Just wondering about the surrounding community and uh, the roads. Um, Duran Street, is that gonna get connected as part of this? Uh, and will there be additional traffic lights needed at Duran Vista and Hill and Vista? That's it. Okay, thank you. All right, commissioners, uh, are you ready to move on to comments? Okay. Um, comments then on the site layout and site design and grading. Commissioner Bell? I need more information. I just don't have enough information to tell here from the, the grade and the plans as to how the elevation changes, whether there's fences on the outside, and I, I'm sure you have a little more detail in the, the bigger plans, but I think when you come back around, having a full set will be really helpful to us to be able to make some decisions and at least give some guidance on that, because um, it's pretty tough to tell from this. Um, otherwise, I, you know, in the four buildings is fine. I'm not, I don't know what goes into deciding that the layout there. So I think Commissioner Bill brings up a good point. Uh, cross sections through the property at several locations, both north, south, and east, west, would help us understand how how the project's going to work. Um, this category also includes grading, which to me uh, includes uh, your garages and and how they're going to work with the units. One of the things this commission has encouraged other townhouse projects to do in the past is to uh, have internal access. It looked like there were a couple units maybe in building B or D that might have direct access from the garage into the unit, but uh, otherwise, from what I understand, everybody's gonna be parking in the garage and walking around the end of the building to, to get to their front door or get into their unit, so. Um, we have a, a stair going up to the first floor, and then you have a, an internal garage going back down to, I mean, an internal uh, staircase going back down to the garage. So if, if the floor plans represent maybe not perfectly, but you won't be, you won't, if it's raining or if it's nighttime, yeah. you, don't, you don't have to walk outside and walk Excellent. all the way around. Okay. You can go directly up from your. Show us how that works right, when yes. you come back, yeah. all right? No, because I know that's. I know that's an important issue, not just to you guys, but to people that live there. I mean, right. I, if I was there, I wouldn't want to have my wife parking her car and walking all around, but we have all internalized, all the units Excellent. have internalized. Garages. Okay, yeah. very good, thank you. Um, Commissioner Looney. Um, just responding again to the first category. Um, uh, because there's gonna be grading, I need a a civil engineer. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to be a tentative map. So tentative map. Uh, we have grading. We have bioretention basins, um, site sections. Um, the, I think it's going to be important for him to clarify the applicant to clarify the trash um, and how that's those bins are taken across those sidewalks. Um, and that's. <coughs> Just again, that site plan review would be good. Right. Pardon? Uh, well, right now, there are two areas shown on the site plan for trash, and, or actually, just trash bins. And it might be good to have some enclosures. And also, are those mm -hmm. trash bins being taken up as they are, as it's drawn now, the trash bins are taken across the sidewalk? So just that that is thought out. Right now, there's two trash enclosures along the The one trash south. enclosure, you're correct. The other trash enclosure, there's the sidewalk uh, starts at the trash enclosure. Yeah, because yeah. we've got, got one here, and we've got one over here. That one goes over the sidewalk. The one on the left actually goes directly into the mm -hmm. driveway in the parking lot. So if I live in the other unit over here, I've got to come across the property. To dispose of my trash. So again, just 
it's a minor thing, but yet it's important when you've got bags of trash. Just think it through. Finding a place for trash is always challenging. Okay. Um, how about architecture? Comments on architecture? Commissioner Looney. Again, um, information is missing. Um, the information that is provided um, isn't real consistent. The floor plans don't work with the stairs. Um, I think it's important to have some building sections that work. The exterior elevations, um, if you could begin to unify some of the roof elements, um, it's almost as if we've got um, a series of cookie cutter units with these little roof elements, but if you can redesign those wall eleva elevations and redesign the roof to where they're um, more contiguous um, and more unifying, that's going to really help the next uh, review. Commissioner Jackal. <clears throat> thank you. Um, I thank Commissioner uh, Kramer for clarifying how the units were cited because I could not figure that out. Gosh. But the floor plans are also very unclear to me, and I really tried, but I couldn't figure them out. Okay, thank you. Um, parking and traffic. Pretty straightforward. I don't think I, anybody had, does anyone have any concerns? Commissioner Jackal. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, you have 84 parking spaces. Uh, are there any designated for visitors? Um, that would be for a three bedroom unit and two and a half for a two bedroom unit. So you'll have a, a number of guest spots that will be unassigned. Okay. In addition to the uh, three ADA units, we have provided. Yes. Thank you. Oh, and one more question. Will you, um, as far as the condominium association is is concerned require that the garages be used only for parking yes so that yeah, we don't have cars because the garages are full that's a standard condition now for all multifamily <clears throat> projects oh, okay great thank you very good commissioner grim uh yes when you have uh you know your tuck under parking you kind of get a um I don't know what you call it, a boxcar effect or a garage, a series of garage doors. And, and if you've uh, got asphalt there, you know, and no, no concrete, then basically you get, kind of get a look of an enclosed feeling. I'm just wondering if it might make sense to uh, consider either toward the front or between buildings A and B, maybe adding some treated concrete in there as part of your, your pavement scheme. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I should speak hard, uh, more into the microphone. I'm just wondering if it might be beneficial between uh, buildings A and B or towards the, the entrance, maybe have like, some treated concrete to help break up the and fact that you've got, you've got a series of garage. And, okay. I, I think enhanced concrete adds a, a lot of nice, nice touch to the section. Great, thank you. I did have one small comment. Um, at the entrance to the project, in front of Building A, there's a single parking space. Um, people coming and going from that space may, I don't know, there aren't that many units, but it'd probably be best to, if that space wasn't there for the traffic flow in and out of the, um, in and out of the project. I was thinking of Commissioner Carroll when I looked at that, and I thought Michael would make that comment, so. <laughs> anyway, all right, um, landscape and amenities. Commissioner Jackal. Okay, I will look forward to seeing your landscape plan. And I see all the common areas, but where is there 
a, a tot lot, a place for children. Perfect spot right in the middle, but at this point we, we didn't include it on the, on the drawings, but in between building C and A, there's an actual handicap ramp that goes up to that area, so it would be accessible for ADA, and we could put a tot lot there if it was an issue. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Um, I tend to agree with um, the, the amenity package seems to be pretty comprehensive, pretty complete. A tot lot would would definitely help, but uh, we reserve the right to comment on your landscaping plan when you bring it in, so so uh, we'll look at that. Um, the other thing that, that we didn't see was colors, so your color palette is going to be important to me, and um, I, we're going to want to want to see a variety and uh, some detail on the uh, on the amenities. Okay, commissioners, any other comments? I got my four items. Commissioner Looney. Yeah, just a, a word to the applicant. Um, I think it would be beneficial to retain a professional team where you've got a professional landscape architect, a civil engineer, and um, an architect to where a set of graphic representations of your project could be presented where we could really understand the intent that you have for this project. Um, one of the other elements I think that um, has come up on past projects too is we've got a property that's about f a little over 400 feet in depth. Um, that's according to a scale, there's no dimensions on the site plan. Um, but from the time one enters the property, we've got just under 400 feet of building that's all aligned with, with each other. And so we've got 400 feet of garages, we've got 400 feet of, of two-story units, and um, the intent of the Planning Commission is to create or to encourage the applicant to create some variety and some interest in the building placement on the piece of property. And I think when you retain that professional team, I think they're going to be able to bring that out um, in that design that will really be an enhancement to what you're trying to do. Very good. Um, any questions that you have of us? You understand our comments pretty well? Okay. Staff, any comments back to, to the commission? Nope. Okay. All right. Very good. So uh, that concludes our excuse discussion. Me. One more. Oh, I'm sorry, Gary. I, I uh, missed it. Uh, no problem. I was just going to suggest we ask the uh, student reps if they have any oh, comments. Oh, thank you. Any comments from the student commissioners? Nope. Yes? No? Okay. Very good. All right, that concludes our discussion on this item, and we'll move on on our um, agenda to reports and comments from commission members. Anything to report? If not, we will move on to Mr. Connolly's report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we will have a meeting uh, on November 6th, which is our uh, next Planning Commission uh, scheduled meeting date. We will not have a meeting for the second meeting in November because it's the week of Thanksgiving. Election it is election night. You guys can all make sure you go and vote before you come to the meeting. We hope to have a quorum that night. We will have a public hearing, at least one. Um, there will also be a meeting on December 4th. That'll be the only meeting in December because of the Christmas holiday. So we'll have one at the beginning of November, one at the beginning of December. Um, I will also bring the Paseo Santa Fe density issue for discussion at the first meeting in December. Uh, with regard to new development and openings, uh, the Shacks Mediterranean Bistro opened up this week um, in the old uh, Vista Village Cafe there. I recommend you go check it out. The Dog House and Beer Garden um, downtown is finally going to open. Saturday. Commissioner Kramer's thrilled. Uh, Saturday, I think, is their opening officially. Uh, East Vista Way uh, was slurry sealed the last two days. It's been kind of a traffic nightmare, so my apologies for that, but the slurry seal is done. 
it has to cure for about a week and then they will, will restripe it next week so that project will be all wrapped up hopefully by the end of next week. Uh, and then finally the council approved a contract for Palo Vista Park, uh, the site there off of Civic Center Drive and uh, we are moving forward with a design consultant to finish up the design for that so I'll bring that back when it's all done. And that's my report. Thank you. Very good. Any other comments or questions? All right. Yes. Good. Oh, Commissioner well, Garrett. I'm sorry, a little slow on the trigger here today. Uh, just a question for Mr. Conley concerning the Del Taco on um, South Melrose. South Melrose, and specifically discussion about a sidewalk because we approved the apartment building behind with zero sidewalks all the way from that apartment to the street. So we were going to talk to the Del Taco people to see if they would take and extend that sidewalk all the way back. Yes, so we are reviewing Del Taco's plans right now. Uh, I have submitted that request to the owner. Um, they have not responded. Uh, it's not something we can require of them since it's a tenant improvement and not a discretionary approval, but we are still working with them to try to get them to uh, install a sidewalk there. So um, I'll let you know if we can get a response from the owner. I appreciate that because there is, I mean, literally when anybody walks out of this, this particular uh, complex one way out, it's only on the street. So that's a, obviously a concern. Thank you. Commissioner Kramer. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Connolly, um, East Vista Way, East Vista Way, south of the new Sprouts, the old Jazzercise business, what's going in there? That'll be coming to you on November 6th. <laughs> surprise, surprise. Okay, thank you. All right, if there are no other comments or questions, we stand adjourned until November 6th. <laughs>